Hello and welcome to Bay College's online lectures for college algebra. In this section 5.4 we're going to be dealing with solving polynomial and rational inequalities. Now before we begin I want us to recall for a moment zeros and multiplicities. Before we deal with an inequality let's recall some properties that may help us when we go to solve these. Let's look at this same example but let's say it's an equation. If I want to solve this equation, well, let's set it equal to 0. x to the fourth minus 9x squared equals 0. Now, if we think about this, if we treated this as a function for a moment, we can find the zeros and know something about the multiplicity. Well, if I factor this to find its zeros, and this would factor further, I can see that I have a 0 of 0 with a multiplicity of 2, x squared times this quantity. So I have x equals 0 mult 2. I also have a 0 of negative 3 and positive 3. And they're just single, so they're odd multiplicity, which means if we recall what multiplicity tells us, it means at this 0 with even multiplicity, it only touches the axis. So if I were to graph this as a function, I would see, OK, at this 0 here, it's just going to touch the axis. And at this 0, negative 3, it's going to cross through the axis. At this 0, positive 3, it's going to pass through the axis. What this means is that there is actually going to be a sign change from here because we know it's a fourth degree polynomial, its end behavior is just like a quadratic, right? one of our library functions. But down here, it has this behavior, where it just touches at this 0. Well, let's think about this in terms of sign change. On this side of negative 3, it's positive. Between negative 3 and 0, it's negative. Because it only touched the axis, it's going to remain negative. But then it's going to pass through here. And to the right of 3, any value is going to be positive. So this concept and using multiplicities of our zeros can help us when we go to solve rational inequalities. Let me take a moment to erase this here. Chasing erasers here. But I'm going to leave my little graph up here for a moment. Because when we find these values, for an inequality, we call them critical points. This is where we have the sign changes. So the critical points here are what we have to find. Now, if I'm going to solve this as an inequality, again, I'm going to set it equal to 0. Well, inequality, right? Just get 0 to one side here, move everything else. And I'm going to do the exact same thing I did to solve an equation. I'm going to factor this. And I'm going to skip that step now, because we already know what it factors to. But now this is less than or equal to 0. Now, my critical values, the critical values are when x is 0 with a multiplicity of 2, which is something I'm going to keep in mind. And then we have negative 3 and positive 3. Let's put these values on a number line, and we'll see how similar it is to the actual graph. I have negative 3, I have 0, and I have positive 3. What we're looking for are the values that make this a true statement, the intervals that make this true. Well, less than 0 says find the values that are negative. We want it less than or equal to 0. Well, if I choose a point to the left of negative 3, and we could just do that, let's say negative 4. If I put that in here, negative 4 squared is a positive value. Negative 4 plus 3 is a negative value. Negative 4 minus 3 more is a negative value. A positive times a negative times a negative, well, an even number of negatives gives me a positive value. Positive values are not less than 0. So this area here doesn't work. And if we go back to this, well, this is a positive value above the x-axis, positive. Well, that's what we got here, but that's not what we're looking for. We want to find less than 0. Now, if we choose uh, something in between the interval of negative 3 and 0, Let's say negative 2. If I plug that in, I get a positive when I square it. Negative 2 plus 3 is a positive. Negative 2 minus 3 is a negative. 
Two positives times a negative is a negative value, which is exactly what we're looking for. So this interval from negative 3 to 0 does work. Also, we have the interval from 0 to 3, and we see this was negative. Well, that was a true statement, that interval. Here, if I try positive 2, well, this is positive, this is positive, this is negative, it still holds true. I get a negative value, which means this interval also holds true. If I try a value out here, if I pick a test point out here, maybe I pick 4. 16 is positive. 4 and 3 is positive. 4 minus 3 is positive. Everything's positive. It's not going to be less than 0. So this value out here doesn't work. Now, the thing about this is my 0 is also included because it could equal, right? It could be equal to. So this is the interval that makes it true. Well, if we combine this, it is a single interval from negative 3 to positive 3. 0 is included in there, just as it was here. So this is the solution. Any value between negative 3 and 3 will give me an inequality true statement that this is less than or equal to 0. Any value within here, because this is where it's negative or equal to 0. Um, oh, one thing that I forgot. It, it does include the endpoints because it could equal 0. So let me just clean that up a little bit and use the proper values. Negative 3 to 3. So let's just review what we did here. We move everything to one side so that we have 0 here. And then we factor. Or you know maybe we have a quadratic. Maybe we use other methods. But factoring is your go-to method. Find the critical values. These are the critical values where sign changes occur in the graph. We're looking for less than 0. That means we're looking for the negative values, or equal to. And if we put the values on a number line and use that to break up the number line into different intervals, we can choose test points to find the values <coughs> excuse me, that make this true. And that's what we found. We found the interval from negative 3 to 3, including our endpoints, a closed interval, makes this a true statement. All right, let's look. Add a few more examples. Let's look at this one here. Well, this one's a little bit different. And if we notice, it's because it's not like a polynomial. It's a rational expression. The first thing we always do with rational expressions is we determine the domain. Well, here, my domain is x cannot equal a positive 4, because 4 minus 4 would be 0. This is a value I'm going to put on my number line to help divide it into its uh, different intervals on a number line. Now I can go ahead and try and solve this as if it were an equation. I'm multiplying both sides. I'm going to write a similar expression. What if it was just equal to 1? Because we're just looking for the critical values. I can multiply both sides by the denominator. And I can subtract x from both sides. Well. This is a not a true statement. 2 does not equal negative 4. Well, what does that mean? It means there are no critical points that are going to change sign for this. So this is the only value I found that actually breaks up my number line. So let's put it on the number line. Here's the value 4. There are values to the right of it, values to the left of it. Let's pick and see which interval makes this a true statement. Now, if I choose a value out here, let's say 0. 0 is a nice number to work with. And I plug it in. I get 2 over negative 4, or negative 1 half when I simplify that. Well, negative 1 half is not greater than 1. So this interval does not work. It makes a false statement, because it's negative when I'm looking for a value greater than 1. If I choose a value out here, let's say 5. 5 plus 2 is 7. 5 minus 4 is 1. 7 over 1 is 7. 7 is, in fact, greater than or equal to 1. So this interval is true. Now, because this is not in my domain, even though this says equal to, this value is not in my domain. So I cannot include it. But any value to the right of that on our number line is a true statement. So this is the solution to this inequality, as long as the value is greater than 4. If we wrote that in set notation, x greater than 4 would be our set notation, x such that x is greater than 4. All right, this is a very similar one. I want you to try this one as your quiz. 
Find that domain, find any critical values, and you will find critical values for this one, and use those to break up your number line. Find the intervals that make this a true statement. All right, let's take a look at an application problem. A company that manufactures bicycles has an average daily cost of manufacturing X number of bicycles is given by this equation. Our cost function of the number of bicycles we produce is equal to 80X plus 6,000 divided by X. How many bikes must be produced so that the cost is no more than 100? So do we understand the words that we just read? Well, I know what a function is, and it, I can see it's a rational function, so I have a concept of that. Uh, when it says how many bikes must be produced, I realize that x represents the number of bikes being produced. And I want to keep the cost no more than 100, which means it could equal 100. I just can't go above that. So this tells me no more than something is going to be less than or equal to 100. Well, our cost, right? This equation describes our cost. So I'm just going to write it up here. 80x plus 6,000 divided by x has to be less than or equal to 100. It can't be any more than 100. And that's what this says. So just by taking the given information when I read it and putting it into an equation, I have something I can work with now. The first thing I'm going to do is realize domain. Well, I know that x cannot equal 0, because that would make this undefined. But in a realistic point of view, could I make a negative value of bicycles? No. I, I either make bicycles or I don't. So I can't make unmake bicycles. So we have to realize that the negative values of x are also out. So x has to be greater than 0. This is one of our domain restrictions. All right, <clears throat> now if we think about this, well, let's go ahead and start solving this. We have this value. Let's see what we have here. We have 80x plus 6,000 over x is less than or equal 100. Well, we've already defined the domain. Let's go ahead and start solving this for x. I'm going to multiply both sides by x to get this out of the denominator. So I get 80x plus 6,000 is less than or equal 100x. Now, let's get x by itself. I'm going to subtract 80 from both sides. And now I can get x by itself by dividing by 20. And I'm going to get 300 is less than or equal to x. But we're looking for a critical value. So let's just for a moment imagine this being an equal sign. It breaks our number line. We know we can't have anything less than 0, because that wouldn't make sense. So we're not going to worry about that. We have a critical point at 300. So essentially, we have two intervals that could make this a true statement. Well, let's find out which one. Let's pick a test point. Well, let's pick a nice value like 100 and plug it back into this equation. See if it makes a true statement. 80 times 100 is 8,000 plus 6,000 is 14,000 divided by 100 is 140. Is 140 less than or equal to 100? No, it is not. So this interval does not hold true. Well, just by the process of elimination, I know I have to make 300 or more bicycles in order to keep my cost less than 100. That means I got a long day's work ahead of me making all those bicycles. But let's choose a test point just to be sure we have it. it let's say I choose, uh, let's say, 400. 400 times 80, and I'll just write it right up here, is going to give me 32,000 plus 600, or 6,000. I'll just write 38,000. Over the value I chose was 400. And if we do this division, is it going to be less than or equal to 100? Well, if we do that division, 4 goes into uh, this 90, whatever, 90 sometimes. Well, 90-something is less than 100, so I don't even have to finish the math. I know that this is going to be a true statement. So what do I have to do? I have to manufacture 300 or more bicycles. 
Or I could say the number of bicycles has to be greater than or equal to 300 in, e in order to keep my manufacturing costs below or equal to $100. So 300 bikes. So that's how we apply the inequalities that we just looked at, rational inequalities. This has been section 5.3. Thank you for watching.